What's going on, man? I uh, just decided to do this today and just kind of testing the water. Just going to tell you what's going on a little bit. I do have an agenda, but not really. Just going to bullshit a little bit. Tell you about what's going on because um, I've started this podcast back. Uh, don't know if I'm going to do it often or just whatever. I just like to rant. I might put it up there, might not. Um, but I was on Facebook, my Facebook page, and people have been saying that I like the videos of me cooking or whatever I'm doing. It's just entertaining, whatever. And they asked me to, you know, kind of do this, and I didn't think about it. I didn't know. And then I got in discussion, and, and it was kind of funny. Some of the, the text messages that happened today kind of inspired me to do this because, you know, people are funny to me, and I love the community I live in. Uh, if you don't know... I live in Jonesboro, Arkansas. They have tons of awards. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go over. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to tell you that. I don't want to spoil. Well, you can stick around for the sappy shit. So, um, just a disclaimer. You know, uh, I'm doing this show. I don't mean to offend anybody. You know, I'm going to say what the hell I think is the truth. Um, if it's something that offends you, uh, I don't mean to be offensive. But I also don't give a shit. So, you know, um, if you get offended by me, that means I'm offended by you. And so, you have the right to be offended and that's okay. You can just not watch me. But if you're going to bitch about me, I'm going to be offended, and I have the right to be offended, too, and I can pick it, too, and all that other woke bullshit, you fucking, ugh. Anyway, I'm going to cuss, I'm going to say what I feel, you know, that's just the way it is, um, kind of talk about some things, you know, uh, you know, that are just funny, you know, some, some things that have been going on, whatever, I, I know, there's a couple of people that want to come talk to me and have an interview and kind of bullshit. When I figure out how to do the computer the right way again, uh, I forgot how to do that. But it was just interesting some of the things that I've, I've kind of went through with friends, you know, and, and my past four or five years of what I went through and, and kind of where I've been. I had to, I disappeared for a while. And a lot of it was just because I wasn't proud of myself. You know, I didn't like myself. For quite some time, I went through nine knee surgeries, and they finally replaced my knee. And you know, there's a there's a well, I, any anything that I that I say, I really don't you know about my personal life. I'm comfortable with. You know, uh, I'm sure you've all fucked up, and if you haven't, and you can't forgive people, you know, shame on you. What would Jesus do? Is what the people around my community say, or the better way to say is bless your heart. <laughs> Ain't that the most fucked up shit to say? <laughs> Southern people, you know, and that's the thing. Most of my friends are in the, you know, different states, not really from around here. I mean, there's, I got my friends in Little Rock, and, and I, you know, there's the community of my friends that I live with up here, of course. But, uh, you know, <laughs> the people that I text message daily are not from this area or have been to this area um, and are banned because they're gingers. Uh, Shane Plunkett, you're not, yeah, you know you're, you're not allowed here. Uh, <laughs> you know, he just, it's not because he, we just don't like you and gingers, mainly. Um, yeah, if you're watching, please don't and tell your ginger friends to go home too. So, <laughs> I love you, brother. Uh, but, no, I got off track there. Uh, sorry. But, it, you know, that's, that's the thing. I, I've had a lot of good communication with friends. Through text messages, even good, you know, just reflecting things and some things that I've, uh, re, you know, researched and some books that I've, I've listened to. I don't read anymore. I've done, you know, I've done my thing, my share of reading. I'm sick of it. It takes too long. I don't comprehend it. You know what? But I listen to everything, you know, so, um... You know, I, I stopped watching any TV or, you know, I don't watch anything that's studio. I watch only, truthfully, the last two months, I only watch anything fighting. I, I don't watch TV. Anything war, anything strategy, anything, it could be, you know, 
the how Carthage uh, was burned and how their history was lost. I watched that last night, and that's just kind of history and and how people are and what are what through centuries we completely continue to be. We're just evolving higher up, and then eventually we destroy ourselves. Is what I'm finding out, but uh, I think we're there because <laughs> it's coming. My God. Um, but you know, there's there's a lot of things that you know I I appreciate the people on my Facebook page that you know you know you message me in you know I've I've a lot of you I'm training now and I, I love the relationships I have I love waking you up with me being able to cuss you out and 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 tell you you suck and people not really understand what I'm saying you know yeah if you know me you know me you know I'm teasing. But, you know, I, I do like to motivate you people, and um, I appreciate you guys reaching out to me uh, and asking me to do this as well and 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 telling me that I need to tell other people some shit. Maybe it's not the right stuff, but it's still fun. And, you know, it's, it, it seems to be working a lot of friends through me talking to me, and I, and I really love just messaging and the funny things that, People really say, and we are the most racist people in the world, and I'm okay with that because every one of those people that I'm messaging are a different nationality. They, we all are different, you know. Like the, you can't be a professional athlete and be in a locker room for years and not say some fucked up shit. You're as some, that's how you sink or swim, baby. You better survive because you're gonna get eaten. You know it, it's tough. Talk about feelings and self esteem. You Jesus. You know there was no feelings and self esteem. We didn't have no choice. Is either kick ass and get it, or sorry, you're chasing the footballs, bitch. Go get the trays. You know that's just the way it is. You know, now we got to be, you know, have feelings and everybody gets a trophy and, you know, and I never got an A in math because I participated. The one good thing I was good at was I got an A in football. I got an A in kicking your ass. I got an A in weightlifting my ass off, making me strong. I got an A in a scholarship for football. Got an A for being an All-American of my own, but I never got an A for participating in math. So I don't think you should get a trophy for, for participating in when, I, when I'm not allowed to stand out on what I do. Um, if you disagree with that, sorry. I don't care. That's my opinion. I think we're raising our children to be very, very gender none. You're literally taking anybody's savagery away, our primal away. There are tons of females that are just as savage in the locker room as men. I find it even more hilarious because they can hold their own. They can be around a locker room or jujitsu mat or, you know, not, maybe not be so sensitive. I, I wish people would get punched in the face or train or get some confidence, but that's the thing. Most people are scared. Most people are scared to go do something new. Because they're embarrassed they're going to be, you know, somebody's going to make fun of me. Well, everybody makes fun of you. you. Look how many people win championships and all of a sudden they lose one fight and they suck. You know, our society sucks. You know, we're, we're not very good people. You know, I'm not a very good person a lot of times. And I had to take myself away from, from a lot of things. You know, I, I was an alcoholic. 30, 30 pack a day and a pack of cigarettes. You know, um, except when I was with my son, you know, and then if there was another adult around or was going to stay around or he was staying at a buddy's house or whatever, yeah, I found a reason. You know, I'm not embarrassed for that shit. I shouldn't have done it. I was a retard. I needed some motivation. I needed some leadership. You know, I have some resources and everything else, but I, I, I lost my, I had to call, you know. My coach called me, and, and one, he, well, both coaches called me. You know, or we call each other all the time anyway, but our talk, and, uh, you know, the one just had surgery that day and cussed me out and said, God damn it, Wesley, get you, you know, what the fuck is wrong with you? And all the things he says to me, I love it. 
Because I needed it. It was true. You know, sometimes we need somebody to kick us in the ass and tell us the truth. I'm sorry if, you know, if you don't like hearing the truth, to stop being a bitch about it. You know, sometimes if you're offended by what somebody says, there's got to be a little bit of truth in that. Because here's the thing. If you were to say I'm an asshole... I agree with you. So how the fuck can I be offended? I can't. Because I am an asshole. I 100% I accept that. <laughs> I love to be the asshole. Oh, I enjoy it so much. I love to piss you off. I cannot wait to, wait to start a fight with my family. There's not a day where I don't mess with my mom or my dad in some way where I don't antagonize the shit out of them. Or a friend. How many of my friends, that's why I do this right now, this video. Because how many of my friends do I wake you up at 4 o'clock in the morning calling you a fat ass? It, is it true? <laughs> is it? But that's the thing. My friends are realistic. A lot of people aren't, you know, and, and the realistic people are getting shut the fuck out. It, it's it's diminishing our character. It's taking away our pet, our presence. It's every everything of who we are as people we've lost because we allowed society to be all inclusive and everybody get a trophy. Everybody's special. No, you're not. You're not fucking special. You can make yourself special. You have the capability and potential to be special. But you don't show up automatically fucking special. So stop acting like you are. People don't get abs because they just get it. It's just genetic. And it's all steroids and blah, blah. It might, it might help them. But they got to do a shit ton of work to get a six pack all the time. I am to 4,000 calories a day burning on my watch. That's burnt. I don't wear my watch unless I'm working out because I bust them all the time because I run into shit. But having said that, I'm up to 4,000. For me to have my full eight pack, oh yeah, it's getting there. I can see them. I have to hit 5,000 calories burned a day. And then can be consistent. But you know what I get to eat? I get to eat two pints of ice cream every night. People shit their pants when they see me just eating ice cream all the time. All the time. And it's because I'm burning so much calories. My body is eating everything and just using it. Because I'm. it might be abuse, but now I'm a drunk for staying alive. Now I'm awake. Now I finally got out of being the drunken stupor and enjoying life and partying and not giving a shit. I mostly still don't. But now I'm not drunk doing it. You know, every day was a party. I always found a reason to go party. Well, now I find a reason to go work out. And here's the thing. Here's some motivation for you. You know what I used to do? If I wanted to go get something to drink, ah, oh, man, go get a couple beers, take the night off. I would go, no, fuck you. You owe yourself another hour in the gym tonight. Luckily, I have two gyms at my house. You know, I built my my wrestling and boxing room, and I have built my facility for my training room for myself. I also have an outdoor course. I have a front workout out course with a jammer and all kinds of stuff. You can see videos on that thing, but I had changed my life that one. That's what makes me feel good. I love smashing shit. I love taking an axe and just throwing it through the woods because... It's fun. Because I hope one day somebody I get to use that axe on that's trying to hurt somebody. You know, I don't think it's ever going to happen in my woods. But, I right, man, I just feel like I'm prepared for that situation. If a giant axe ever needs to be thrown through somebody, got you covered. <laughs> I don't fucking care. It's fun. But that's what I find fun. What you find fun might not be fun, might not even have an axe to do with it. You know, I take 
giant butchered things and little hatches and throw them everywhere too. My son's learned how to do it too. But you know, what else are you gonna do in the woods? You know, we have four cats. Yeah, I'm a cat lady. And I have a giant uh, 140 pound kind of corso named Phil. And he's a good dog. He's mentally ill. Uh, but then my four cats, uh, we have Big Kitty, Baby Kitty, Pamphor, and Ninja. Not that y'all needed to know that, but if you can see that I'm a sensitive type person. I love animals. I don't want to kill nothing. I, um, I've never hunted in my life. I don't want to hunt nothing. Uh, I'll keep that thought to myself. <laughs> Psychotic thoughts. I love it. Suck it up, people. It's going to get brutal. But, no, I just, uh, some of the things that I've done is, you know, I started learning about people and patterns. And, and you know, I've been a therapist and people go to therapists. And there's a lot of people that are depressed right now. And they're, you know, and I know what works for me. You know, I noticed when I would... Have now that I, I don't drink or smoke cigarettes anymore or anything else, and people didn't know. I mean, I was competing doing that shit, you know. And uh, <laughs> I'd be like, I went to a BJJ competition, I was drunk and higher and shit, um, and beat two world champions and didn't care, you know. And it's not that I'm proud of that, it's just that's who I was at that time. You know, that, that's the depression I was going through. You know, it was, and that's, that's sad. I don't know what caused that, but I'm glad I got out of it. You know, I'm glad I had my own wake-up call whenever it was. I'm glad I figured my shit out, you know. So, whatever you might be going through, you know, try to figure it out or contact somebody. Here's the thing, we all, like, look, man, I, am, I involved my friends from high school, from San Diego, from Las Vegas, my fight buddies, guys that I knew. Guys that I knew were like me, or people that I knew were like me, or at least I could bullshit with them and say, this you, <laughs> you monkeys, you know, and it's like, guys that I understand, I can still say the words I used to say in the 80s, you know, they ain't gonna get all pissy and offended, oh, he did, he did, it's this, you know, I, I like the life we used to be, I don't want to be offensive to nobody, but that's the thing, I don't want to talk to you fuckers anyway. I'm already talking to the people I want to talk to, you know, and that's the people I hung out with in high school, that's the people I hung out with in college, that's the people I still hang out with now, that I surround myself with, and I think people are too focused on other shit, pay attention, educate yourself, we have our phones, we have everything we need to get smarter, you know, like, this is what I find amazing, you know, is like, through my phone, I, I stopped reading. I don't read books anymore, man. I hate that shit. It takes too long. But, you know, some of the books that I've here, I, I would have never read Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. I didn't read it. I listened to it. Great audio book. He tells his stories after each chapter. Him and the, uh, he narrates kind of and everything else. It, it's a very cool concept because he kind of podcasts through it too in a way, I guess. Um, then I have Reset Your Day Meditations. I've been doing a lot of meditation and breath work. Some things that uh, you learn through jiu-jitsu and fighting anyway, but I don't think fighters really evolve into that much. Um, food of the gods, fingerprints of the gods, just because uh, uh, <laughs> I, those books are, you know, always the deal with aliens and weird shit, so I'm into that. Tribe, um, Four Agreements. Oh, Lord, I don't want to tell you all the books. Outliers, Civilized to Death, Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey, that's a good one. Uh, Outliers is, uh, I think that's Malcolm Gladwell or Jocko, I, I forget right now. And then I'm also uh, learning some Russian, because I, I, me and Town are doing it together just so that I can speak to him in a language and it sounds savage for one. It sounds also like I'm cussing him out. But also he will only understand. I'm trying to help him educate himself to understand that we have these resources and we need to use them. I, maybe I didn't get it. Sorry to all my friends 
that I didn't get it before. If I'm still kind of getting it now, I don't know. But, oh, there it is. Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink. And uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. That's just some kind of the books that I've read or listened to. Um, you know, and I just surround myself with nothing but that. I don't watch any more TV. I don't even watch football. I don't give a shit what's on the TV. I have not watched, Ohio, like, my God. I think the really last time I watched football for serious was years ago. And that was the Notre Dame-Alabama game where I almost called every play. Every play. It was when Alabama blew out Notre Dame. I was like, they're going to run out the middle. They're going to throw it to the tight end. They're going to do this. It was just like, and then guess what? The past three years, like, did you see the Super Bowl? I'm like, no, let me guess. Tom Brady won it in the last couple minutes. I've seen it. I've lived it. It's been done. I got bored with it. That's why I drank myself into oblivion. I wasn't making myself any better. I was just sitting there doing the same shit and indulging way too much into it. It was my fault. Listen, I listen. It's my mistakes. I'm, I accept everything I've fucked up in my life. You can't not tell me that I won't tell you the truth about my life. I don't care. Man, I, everyone makes mistakes. I'm proud of my mistakes. I'm proud that I'm able to tell you I've overcome those mistakes. And I was able to make better of myself. Man, I love coming back. That's the thing. I can't handle success worth a shit. I can get to the top. Because that's what I am. I'm not an elite athlete. I don't belong. I didn't belong in pro football. I didn't belong boxing where I did. I didn't belong in the UFC. I didn't belong... Bellator, I didn't believe, you know why? I barely learned. All I had was work ethic. I could outwork you. I could lift my ass off. I could out-train my, uh, everybody. You know, and then when I started having success, what did I do? I started partying and living. I started, you know, what's the downfall of Mike Wessel? I told my ex-wife this and I said, name the two things that's cost Mike Wessel the most money. She got one right. And I said, well, I said a different word. But uh, women and beer. My choices. With all those things. Because, man, I, all I had to do is make the... I love teasing my mom. Just by just going, all I had to do is make them, make them cheer. All I had to do is make the crowd clap for old Wessel. He can get whatever he wants. <laughs> I know I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> but but that's the thing, you know. It took me a while. I, you know, everybody tells my my son changed my life. I've been different since my child's been born. Now, I, my kid didn't change my life. I'm still an asshole, but my kid changed my life in way different ways. I mean, he changed, you know, you understand, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Like, when the people are saying that he's changed, I totally admit did a 180 direction and blah, blah, and they're lying their asses off. No, it took me a couple years, and I'm still not there. You know, and, and I'm not, I'm not proud of the person I was, but I don't give a shit about the past either. You know what that is? That shit. I already did that shit. That's where I was. And that's what I wish a lot of people would get from this. Or get from me, or what? You know, watch that shit. We have we have the resources, man. Well, our parents didn't have what we have. They didn't have an iPhone. They can go, hey, hey, I have a problem. I recognize this in myself. What other people have the same damn problems. We can help ourselves. You don't have to be depressed. Give me a call. I promise you I've talked to a lot of people. I don't even know. I have no clue. And I never talked to them again. Some of them were pranks. Some of them some of them maybe were being mean or, you know, there's a like, oh, we'll see what Mike whatever. Man, that might have, to me, I tell my son, you know, he sees me give money to poor people in the corner. I know you probably shouldn't have, but when I believe it's a real person, when I believe that person really needs my help, that's my decision. I, I really think of it like this. You know, I, I believe in God and I believe in my belief. I believe in my God. And I say my God because that might be some of your beliefs, but it's probably not. And I really don't give a shit. I'm happy you have your relationship with whatever your God you have or several or whatever they are. I, I'm glad you do or don't. 
It doesn't bother me. If you want to tell me about it, tell me about it. If I don't want to hear about it, I'll tell you I don't want to hear about it. You know, so we're all good, right? Why is, it, why is everybody else have a fucking problem? But, going back to that, when you give money to that person, or you see somebody needs your help, or you see something like that, I always think, you know, that might be God. He knows I have a dollar. He knows I have that five dollars that I can spare. He knows I also can get more money. I have the capability and opportunities to get that money. That guy might not. The guy that you help out might not. You know, I know you shouldn't pitch up, pick up hitchhikers, but, when, you know, I'm really not scared. And the whole time I'm wishing a motherfucker would. Because <laughs> I do. You know, I really want that stuff to happen. If my child's not involved, oh, please have a building on fire. I cannot wait to maybe just run through a window. I don't care if anybody's in it. You know, <laughs> like, my. The fire department was burning out. I was like, I, I had to take a chance. You know, fuck, man. You know, it's I don't know what it is in me. It just makes me feel like that. And, you know, there's been situations in the past four years that I was in where a guy admittedly hit and ran me. And then I followed him. He acts like he's pulling a gun. And I just happened to get him off his, his motorcycle very gently. He got off himself, matter of fact. He took himself off of it. And I got out of my Jeep. And we discussed it as men. And we left it at that. You know, a lot of things get discussed the right way and the old way. And sometimes they go a different way. And a lot of people have problems with how you handle things. Well, I understand who I am. So, you know, that's the thing. Once you learn who you are, you know, be confident in that. Fine. Use these resources. Like, I have this list of shit to do. I have all these things to do. I have lists and lists and lists. I love to help the people and train people. I love doing it. I love when you guys reach out to me and say, hey, Mike, I'm having problems with this and I want this and I'm paying this trainer and I don't understand and they ain't showing me that my posture sucks. You know, and I'm like, man, I love to help you. Please use me as a resource. Please, please, if you want to make a comment, make I don't want to get fan. I don't like. I want it to be genuine. Don't be faking. Don't be those people that it, where I have to ask if it's if it's really Jesus or not. It's, you know. Don't make me donate my time when I could be helping somebody else. But at the same time, if you really do have questions, maybe I can put you in a good resource. I might know somebody that knows somebody, you know, and, and so it's like, you know, or just you know, at what books, like I, like I just gave you a list of books. All those books are great books. Then none of them are fiction. I'm not into that. I think fiction is made up. I'm not sure. I forget. I get hit in the head a lot. <laughs> But no, I you know I, all I involve myself as far as the as far as my education and resources, anything I can learn, warrior, anything I can learn, fighting, strategy, philosophy, breathing, anything that's going to make me better in some way. It doesn't have to be like how I'm going to be a better businessman today. Well, why don't you figure out how to be a savage motherfucker? What? Who were they? Look the people up that were that. Who are the people that taught the savage people? You know, you everybody loves Mike Tyson, but who taught him? You know, that's one of the, my favorite people, the philosophers, you know, uh, philosophers, you know, Muhammad Gandhi. You know, I take hardly any of his traits. <laughs> my natural response is a smash. You know, but he was a great warrior because he didn't. He got everybody to submit to him because he didn't smash. They smashed him. They locked him up for just being, hey, we're peaceful. You know, so there's there's the strategy and philosophy through somebody that didn't have to be it. But that was just as savage as Genghis Khan. You know, look at, uh, God, I forget the guy that did his book, uh, Forgotten History or uh, uh, something podcast history, but The Wrath of the Cons, okay? Look up that Wrath of the Cons. You can barely find it. 
But you, oh my God, you want to talk about warfare and things, man. And and that, you know, I listen to boxing things like Customato and the things that Muhammad Ali used to say. And, and even and currently how, and you don't understand, you know, like people like Conor McGregor, McGregor took philosophy from great warriors. Floyd Mayweather has sold certain things from great warriors. They used to fake their opponents out. There's a great samurai used to fake everybody out by showing up late and piss everybody off, and then they got all, then he stabbed them. And everything. It was all this philosophy, and, and that's what I surrounded myself with. So, you know, my, my suggestion to everybody is if you're going through some shit, man, for one, stop fucking drinking. That's half the problem. I'm sorry. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I believe in my God and all that stuff, and, but it ain't because of Jesus I stopped. You know, I, I stopped because I needed a change because I wanted to live and be a better person for my kid. I didn't want to become this other hateful piece of shit that I was becoming. You know, I, I was being this person. I was becoming this person, so I had to detach myself. And it's okay to step the fuck away. Get the fuck away. Step away from that reality. You don't need to be in there if it's toxic, man. Get away. If it's your family, suck it up. They will destroy you too if it's toxic. You know, I, I've said to a lot of people, man, you're, it's going to take a, you're going to have to sit at a tall table to be my friend at this point. I'm not, I'm not here trying to be anybody's friend. You know, the friends, I already have them. I already got the people that I love, the people that are my family. You know, and that, that I don't need no more because for the most part, I don't trust people. You know, but. That's just because of the things that I've went through, too. You know, and, and a lot of things you can change if you're depressed. You can be a different person. I'm keeping that going because I want to tell you some awards that are very funny about the place I live in. But, you know, you know, if you, if you, if you got some problems, man, we can change them. Maybe I can't help you. Maybe I can't help you. Maybe you can look up some things and, and the resources of the books or, or some podcasts that you listen to. Or just find someone that's had depression or find someone. There's, there's tons of people on the internet that have, have dealt with something maybe that you've dealt with. Okay, that you've went through and, and you can take some inspiration from them. You know, I suggest everybody start working out. I, I suggest everybody do jujitsu. It's the most humbling thing ever. I get my ass kicked a lot and I used to be really good. But I get my ass kicked a lot. And and it, it's very great. It's a great resource for me. But I also work my ass off working out because I want to be 44 years old and have an eight pack. And uh, that's my that's my goal. I want to be as in shape, healthy as I can be. When I reach about 5,000 calories burned, like I said, I don't wear my watch unless I'm working out because I smash things. I run into things. But um, uh, I only wear it, and then, then you, you see the calories I burn today. I post that every now and then. I stopped posting because I took a break. I think I tore my rotator cuff again. Uh, not again, but the other day, uh, sparring, just flow sparring. I threw my right shoulder out like the second round, and it's been messing with me, but it was hurting before. So I took a break 10 days before that, and so I think I screwed it up more. But oh well. Um, I mean, I lost this bicep. That bicep has been gone. I've lost all my hamstrings through football. I've had nine knee. In the, okay, uh, update. I know it's for sure 13 knee surgeries on the right knee plus knee replacement. That'd be 14 total. And then, uh, oh, let me mix there. What's going on? Somebody's beeping at me. Okay. Um, and then I had two on the other one. And uh, I have proof of that. <laughs> but... No, um, so I'm just saying, you know, uh, go exercise. Get your ass up. Be motivated. If you need some motivation, I'll fucking yell at you for free. You know, I like to do it. Give me your phone number. <laughs> but you can also, uh, if you want to join me or add me on the, the Apple Watches and all that stuff, uh, email me. You can look at me through Facebook. I have Mike Wessel Life page. Um, but I found this funny just because it's interesting to the town I live in. And, and I always tell people this place is, 
it's special. It's it's a lot of people, you know, in in the South, the most racist thing you could ever hear if you're a Yankee is bless their heart. See, I didn't know I was a Yankee until I came to Arkansas. You know, and once I got to Arkansas, I realized Peyton Hillis, when I was coaching for the Razorbacks, says, I know you're nothing but a darn Yankee. And he gave me some bullshit story about how he wanted to be on my platforms or whatever, but he hated his, his strength coach. And, and I didn't get it. I thought he meant Yankees like baseball. I was like, man, I, and I was a Cubs fan, Peyton. <laughs> you know, he's, he's no Yankee Northern. And I didn't know that until I came to Arkansas. That that's still a thing. But, um, so all the southern people, if you hear southern people, or all the northern people, if you hear southern people say, bless your heart, and they're looking at you, that means when we hear the north, we call you a retard, all right? That's us saying that about you, okay? That's the best way I can say it if you get mad at me because I said the word retard. I don't care. It's not. We've all heard it. I don't mean to offend nobody. I'm saying the difference. So people are saying that in the South when they say bless your heart. Trust me. This is one of the things. So, but along with that, it's like award season in Jonesboro. And I found it so humorous. Okay. So the town I live in, it's so fun. Uh, before it kind of blew up in the past five years, there's nothing really here. Um, you know, I lived a lot. Of, I've lived, I've been to every state except Alaska. I've lived in a lot of states, traveling, playing different sports and doing all the things I've done. And my friends that fly into Memphis or Little Rock that come visit me and the people that come here and we go, I show them my surrounding area. It's not that there's a lot of great people. Don't get me wrong. I, I, there's a lot of good friends here. You know, they know I'm different. There's a lot of difference, but the people that I that hang out with me uh, that that know this place will find this part very humorous about where I live, and I find it funny because we've been laughing all day. Um, but just going through some things, you know, I, I just see if you can see uh, some. I, I keep screwing up the camera, but uh, there's a local magazine that for the past, like before the past. Five, six years um, before, I guess, uh, maybe a little bit longer. I've been here for about 15. I have 12 or something like that. I don't know. I don't do good with numbers. Who cares? Uh, but for the longest time, uh, there's a catfish buffet that was like their number one restaurant. And it's so hilarious because they, they're so cultured now with their restaurants. It's, and, and even their most cultured restaurant, their most romantic restaurant, uh, is a steakhouse, and of course, it's because it's it's supposed to be the it's the, it's supposed to be like the most expensive, and which you know their cooking and everything is catered down to pretty much the taste buds of fried food eating people. Because the town I live in, oh my gosh, congratulations! You are like number fifteen, Jonesboro, Arkansas. America's most obese metro areas. Number 15, Jonesboro, Arkansas. Obesity rate, 39.7%. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, my God. It makes me happy that I'm not this. Um, we're pretty good on, you know, diabetes where I live. Uh... Yeah, it's, it's pretty ridiculous that I live in, like, seriously, it, like, I know there's a lot of fat people in the North. I know there's a lot of obese, whatever you call it, and everybody's got their problems. Here's what I say when I mean fat people. So all you people getting a fat, offended, you don't say somebody's not an alcoholic. You don't say somebody's not an anorexic. How do you describe fat people? You can say obese, but obese might mean diabetic issues, thyroid issues. That means something. Fat people means they are capable, and that's it. They're just, they're that way to me. 
That's my opinion of a fat person. You cannot be that way, but they have excuses not to. So they're all, you know, it's just interesting to me. And, and it sounds like a lot of excuses, but there's a lot of damn motorized carts in Walmart and the places I go, and it's gross. It is gross. Like, everywhere around me, and it might be in the towns you live in, too. I don't know. I stopped going to different places. I don't go out of my house anymore. It's gross out there. You know, I understand people might not like me, and I'm an asshole, and I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Those people are probably gross to me. As I offend them, they offend me, you know, but... It's the laziness of people. It's the people that come up with excuses. It's, oh, I want to. And you hear all this, you know, and then they get the feel sorry for me and all that. And that's, I ain't got time for your shit. It's gross. Fix it. We have the resources. We have technology. You can fix your fat ass from not being. How about you teach your children not to be a fat fuck? How about we be better people? I know this sounds like I'm being an asshole, but how about we be better people? How about we teach our generations not to be obese and overeat? We are the worst country in the world, and I just happen to live in one of the worst places for obesity. And it is gross out there, kids. It's gross. Let's go down some of the awards of all the restaurants are here. You know, Oriental Express. You know, of course, you know, you got your ears, buffets, barbecues, of course, one, one, one literally. So if I get banned for saying anything about fat, there's a restaurant called Fat in this town. Look it up. I'm in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Look up what they call their own restaurant. Understand they eat like this is, this is, it's disgusting. I have a right to be disgusted and I have a right to be offended. So if you're offended by me saying that people shouldn't be fat, I don't know how to call an alcoholic not an alcoholic. If somebody is depressed, do we not call them depressed? Oh. But you shouldn't say it's so mean. You shouldn't be, I'm sick of enabling people to be obese fat, whatever you want to call it. Get off your ass or move the fuck out of the way. Everybody's like, oh, take your shot, your vaccinations, and I'm like, you know what kills COVID? Vitamin D. Most people that have died of COVID that are not of 90 years old, that probably died of something else anyway, uh, are, are vitamin D deficient and obese. Fat. Know what they're not saying is work out, get healthier, go outside and ride your back bike, fatty. You know, go do something, move your ass. They're not telling you to do that because that doesn't make them money. Here, everybody, go inside, condemn yourselves. Everybody gets sick with it. I don't even want to get on with that. It's just it's just an excuse to be fat. And that's why our country has gotten fat. Our country has gotten lazy. Man, it's time for the revolution, man. Look at look at what we're eating. Catfish. Barbecue ribs. I don't want to call it these places names because I don't want to offend them. But all these restaurants are the same they were 10 years ago. Are the biscuits really that fucking good? Can they be in the Cat Bay Biscuit? <laughs> oh, wrong catfish was just a rock catfish over there. I love the pizza buffet. They got that chocolate pudding. Do you know in the South, they have, or what is it? Chocolate gravy. That's what it is. My bad. My bad. It wasn't chocolate pudding. Chocolate gravy. They have chocolate fucking gravy. So, congratulations to Jonesboro, Arkansas, 15 obese cities, metro cities, with catfish buffets, 
Nothing. There's nothing original in here. It's all just gross. And it might be that way in your town too. It, it you know, maybe I shouldn't beat up on the 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 <laughs> bless their heart community. You can hate me, I don't care. I'm not lying. Oh, where are we at? I mean, they got some good things here. Uh, really don't care. Really don't care. Of course. That's good. I love how the both hospitals fight each other in the town I live to, too. They're for their best weight loss. There we go. Best gym is Trim Gym. It's the big. It's the one that's been here. It's the most douchiest. Um... Use car dealership? Who cares about that? Like, and then who cares about the awards? Like, it's... Like, do you really watch award shows? Do you really care about, like, who's the best anymore that's famous? Like, that's what I love about this thing with COVID and, like, shows like Tiger King. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, I gotta stop watching TV. You know, after I see that, I was like, Jesus... You know, I've got to get better. My life's got to get better. i got to get my brain better. i got to get my mental better. You know, because the people that are getting awards are all just gross. You know, and I ain't trying to be negative, And that's not what I'm trying to be, at, you know. But when, when you, I mean, look. Okay, so even the headlines in my town that I live in, Arkansas tied for third worst in U.S. obesity. So the state I live in is the third most obese. But these people, I promise you, I promise you, line up and go to church every Sunday. And they will call out people for the sin and the devil and all this thing. This community is one of the most religious, Bible-beaten, belting communities I've ever seen. Be proud, Jones World. It's not like it's a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But you all line up and tell people that Jesus and we all, we're all praying and we're all doing all these things. I'm not making fun of it. I pray. I thank my God every day. I think the person I believe in, the people that I think are gods, what I believe in, and I'll deal with my heaven and my hell on my own. I don't give a shit about yours. But I'm not making fun of your religion. What I'm saying is, the religion you believe in has, oh, there's a famous movie about it, these sins. And gluttony's one. And your body is a temple. I know a lot about the book. It's all seeing, all knowing the scrolls. The scrolls, the all knowing scrolls. Yeah, there are just stories. You know, and they're great guidance stories to me. But the, this, these beliefs, it's funny how you, the community is all this, this Bible belt community, but you guys forget the, one of the most deadly sins is glutton. Maybe you should look into your community and start changing it. Maybe we shouldn't make it easier for the fat people to get into the restaurants that are called fat. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't make it easier for people to be unhealthy. And then, maybe we shouldn't shame the ones that are healthy. Maybe we should just leave everybody the fuck alone. But, you look at it like that, you know, I like to call out sins too. You know, people like to Say, Mikey, you've done a lot of bad things or I've done good things or whatever I've done. I'm good with whatever happened. I can explain to myself really what's happened in my life. And I, I take faults for it. I've done some things. But I also know that there's a lot of people that... I just want you to hear if you're hearing this. Man, maybe you're one of those people that go to the, the, the Baptist church around here. Or maybe you're one of the people that go to the... The, the the stone quarry churches here. Maybe you go to, you know, whatever it is around. 
and you line up every day, and maybe you're also one of those gluttons. And maybe you shouldn't point out, because, I mean, we're the third, tied for the third most obese state, and you're the 15th in the U.S. metro city that's obese. And I promise you, they almost got as many motorized carts and Walmarts around here as I've ever seen in my life. I stay out of Walmart as much as I can because it's gross. And I'm sorry if I'm offending people. I'm not. I'm not sorry. You need to hear it. it sucks. Stop being a fat ass. You know, I don't know what to eat. Not cheeseburgers from fucking McDonald's, asshole. I don't know what to do. How about not fried food? Let us get you places. I mean, it's not hard to figure out. And maybe I'm beating you up. And maybe you're like, oh, my God, I have this and I got this problem. And I got this problem. We'll figure it out. You have the resources. Figure it out. Make it happen for yourself. Oh, here's another thing in Arkansas. We're big, big winners. Big winners. Big stroke stats in Arkansas, I believe. Let me scroll down here. I think we're number one for strokes. Highest stroke mortality rate in the United States, according to the statistics from the Center of Disease Control and Prevention, according to a study, uh, Arkansas, Alabama, Mississippi, Oklahoma, including the top five states, Missouri is ranked number 12. So, we're the third most obese state. We're number one for strokes. Seems like there's some circulation problems going on. Maybe a gym and working out would help you. Because here's the thing. I do notice that Jonesboro's not a bunch of big drinkers. Not like Ohio. Not like where I'm from. Jesus, everybody's got refrigerators in their goddamn garage. <coughs> full, of, full of, that's where the big good beer's at. You know, that's, that's. You know, that, that's where I grew up in, where everybody had a TV in their garage and another fridge. It ain't like that here in the South. You know, so you can't blame it on alcohol. You can't blame, you know, you can't blame, like, depression and everything else. I mean, the strokes, it's, it's pure eating habits. And it's choices. You know, but it's, it's just amazing... The, the the places we live and and here's the thing you know I want to hear the stats uh, from where you're at you know the, my friends that are watching this the people that you know message me and everything else I want to know what, what you think and what's going on you know um, you know I, I want to leave you I'm gonna end the the first podcast back I think with this story you know I was talking to a friend and uh we were talking about our lives right now and the things that are going on, the phase we're going through and we're realizing, I was like, man, do you realize this isn't the phase? I said, this is the phase of graduations. This isn't the phase of having babies anymore. This isn't the phase of divorces or our divorces should be over the, the 35s, the 28 year olds are doing that, you know, and we're going through the, the phases of our parents dying. And we're becoming the leaders. And and that's scary. That's kind of what helped me not drink anymore. That's kind of like I, I've got to be a better leader. Because one day I'm going to have to teach my kid how to do this. And not just do it for him like my dad did for me. Or my mom would just show up out of blue to help me out with doing whatever thing. Because things got overwhelming in my life. You know, I had to go to Poland or I was flying to another country to fight, whatever I was doing, you know, and, and they always dropped, you know, I'm not going to have that. And when a good friend of mine, and I, and, and he knows this, his mom, I had the biggest crush on his mom. Oh, I always loved her. And she was, she was the person that I, like, I had my first, like, you know, there's those women that are like, yeah, of course we call them milk skills or whatever. And I'm sorry for saying your mom was, but you know, she loved me and I loved her for the person she was to me. And, you know, and he told me the story of, you know, how he, he realized, you know, the things, the last things that she was able to give him and...
and he he kind of just it makes me sad. It does because I really care about this person, and it made me think of you know our lives where you know that's the part of our lives now is our kids' graduation and our parents dying. That's what we're we're looking forward to, and and we didn't have the leadership. Like I, I feel bad for my dad. I feel bad for my grandparents because we didn't have the resources. I feel bad for the people that don't use the resources now. I, I, I feel like a stupid ass for not doing it myself or not catching on or not not getting to the phase. But I'm glad I have the resources I do now because I can talk to my friends and he can suggest things to me and I can suggest things to him in the situation that he's going through. And, you know, you know we, we are the now the leaders. We're becoming the teachers. Our parents are retired. It's time for our generation to take over. Are we being what we need to be? Are we doing the things we do, We need to do? Are we preparing our children for for them to take over? Are they? Are they? Are we preparing our children? It sounds like we're preparing our, preparing our children for for one a speech impediment. <laughs> <laughs> and two, we're preparing from strokes and obesity from where I'm living. And a bunch of people saying, bless your heart from a church pew that can all change it themselves. But bless your heart. We're going to eat some sweet tea and some coffee and some, uh, what is that, chocolate gravy. You know, and, and that's what we're teaching our kids. And we're expecting, uh, we're expecting people to be better. We're not raising them healthier. And we're the leaders now. And I think about my friend and how I told him, I was like, yeah, it, you're, like he, his mother passing was like the first mom of, of my friend's families to go, man. And, and that was the one I had the biggest crush on. You know, I loved her, you know, and she explained to me a lot of things that maybe, you know, in, in a positive way, you know, and she, in the conversations I had with that woman, I was blessed to have, she was a great person and I feel bad for my friend and his, his brothers and sisters. And, but like he told me the, the last thing that she left him with and the family with and everything else. And it, you know, we got to talking and it's like, you know, we got to educate ourselves. We got to be better for our next generation, man. Ah! You can't be a fucking hard ass all the time. You know, it, you can't be a savage all the fucking time. You got to have a heart, but like I feel for my friend and I feel like we're, we're not living up to what we need to live up to, kids. Or at least I am. Or I'm not, excuse me. Or I don't feel I'm done. I feel I've got a lot of things I gotta I gotta accomplish. I feel like I've got a lot of things. Like look at us. We have we have the ability to be forty four years old and, and healthy as shit. Like I have abs, like I have all this technology to work out and do all these things and I get to be this person. Am I what am I doing with my life? My parents that when we're forty four look like shit. We all remember our parents at forty four. Our grandparents are forty you know. Our generation's different now. We can be different people, but we're not making it better for our kids. We're leaving it. We're, we're the most obese fucking town. Come on, man. It's just... Hate me for calling you fat and telling the truth. Hate me for telling the truth, but hopefully you listen. You know, that's the way I feel. Maybe it's not the truth to a lot of people. But that's how I feel my truth is. And if it offends you, I'm sorry, but you're I'm offended that you'd be offended by that. And I'm glad I had that story with my friend. I'm glad I had that with him because it made me a better person. And I'm glad he shared those shit that shit with me. I'm glad, you know, he remembered how much, you know, you know, I'm glad I got to have a conversation with her, you know, last year and and you know, and tease her and, you know, and flirt a little bit with her. Who cares, you know? And they, hey, he was present. He was on the phone line and weird, whatever. It doesn't matter. But, you know, <laughs> that's the that's thing. Is, you know, it's, it's that's a fun shit. And, you know, I, I hope everybody's being positive, man. I hope everybody. I know I sound negative a lot of times. I know that, 
you know, but it comes from a good place. I promise. I might not be saying it right, but, right, but I, I, you know, it, it's these things are pa like that's my passion, and I, I do care about people, but I also. I, I care about people lying to themselves. And I'm, I'm sorry for lying to myself to people. I'm sorry I was always that character to people. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry about how... About a lot of things. I might get into those one day, but... You know, there's, there's some things that I've fucked up. And I hope... I can... I, I'm my worst critic. Some people might not give a shit, but I still do, you know, and, and so I hope we all get to that place, but I have the resources to do it that are free, well, maybe not free, you're paying for your phone anyway, that's your therapist, that's your exercise, you can get every workout on there, you can find whatever you want, you can be whoever you want right now. Just, you gotta, you gotta change yourself to do it. You know, I hope you see this as a positive. I hope you don't see this as a negative. Um, it wasn't meant to be a negative. I I, I love my friends and I, I don't want to embarrass you. You know, I always appreciate the people that you've been to me. Um, oh, sorry. That, that went off. That was good lighting. I didn't realize it. But I, I really do appreciate my boys. You know who you are. And my gals. You know who you are. Uh, the people have always been there for me in my life. Uh, the people the past 10 years, you know, 15, 20, you know, even the recent guys, even the recent people, you know, and, uh, and I'm sorry for the relationships I've ruined and I've caused myself for just my own stupidity and I, and I accept the things that I've done, you know, and I, I think we all need to do that and, uh, and really be realistic with ourselves and, and change. And try to, hey, Kenny. And change. I've got four cats if I didn't say that. Uh, that's Panthers. No. Oh, there's Panthers. And I'm not lying. That's Panthers. But that's one of the four. But I hope you, I hope you're doing good. I hope your life's well. And if, you know. You can take some of these resources, these books, and all these things that I've done, and, and maybe listen to this podcast or listen to some other podcasts. And you know, I'll be checking in every now and then with you. But I hope, hope you're doing good. Good talking with you again.